All right, as we move into um, the last part of 19-4, 19-3, Bands Pass Filters, your first experience into these uh, filter circuits, uh, I want to reiterate a couple of things again. Uh, these are called passive circuits. Passive. That means they have no power. There is a signal going into them, but there's no battery. When you go with bipolar junction transistors, when you build them with FET amplifiers, when you build them with op amps, now you have an active filter which can overcome for signal losses that the basic three filters that we've talked about um, suffer from, which is signal loss. You put in 10, you get 9.5 out. You didn't get everything out. You got a lot out, but you didn't get everything out. So these are passive circuits. We've done a Bode plot now. We've gone through and spent a lot of time in the high pass area and a low pass filter area. We, we screamed through high pass filters and did a Bode plot as well. So I recommend you look at the Bode plot so that you know how to make one in the future. Basically, you have a filter. You, you need to bombard it with multiple frequencies that surround critical frequency, uh, which would be right here in a bandpass circuit. Um, so if you were building a Bode plot for this kind of circuit, you'd want to pick frequencies to the right, frequencies to the left, and of course you'd like to pick the center frequency. So by picking six or seven frequencies, you can do a Bode plot of a bandpass filter in much the same way. So the bandpass filter allows frequencies, and we've, we've talked about this a little bit uh, before, certain frequencies in. This is like the good old boys club, and everything that sits between this green box is pristine real estate. This is the part of the signal that passes. So every bandpass filter has a lower cutoff, and every bandpass filter has a higher cutoff called FC2 or FC1. I usually call them the lower and upper or lower and higher cutoffs. And then the center, F sub zero, that's basically the critical frequency. So that's what's going on here in this plot. And of course, the closer you are to the F0 um, or the FC, the center frequency, the closer you are to the uh, center point of the sweet spot, which is right here, that line would be a perfect bandpass filter for passing one frequency. As The closer you are to the red line, um, the tighter and the bigger the signal is, and uh, the closer you are to the um, uh, critical frequency, the, the center frequency in the bandpass. Now, you know, in simplistic terms, if you want to look at how a bandpass gets made, you could combine a low pass and a high pass circuit. You'd have to have overlapping critical frequencies. So the low pass would need to have a critical frequency that's on the high side. That's right here. And the low pass would need to have a critical frequency. Uh, let's get rid of that real quick. It would need to have a critical frequency, F, C, low, which is on this side right here. And if you put these two circuits together end to end, you would essentially construct a bandpass filter of some type. You would be passing, uh, you know, and rejecting in these two areas out here. You'd be rejecting everything and passing everything in the gray area located right in this region. Here's a um, bandpass circuit. It can't be built any other way with these three parts. It can't be built any other way. You have to take your output voltage with respect to ground across 
the resistor. So what's happening is at really, really low frequencies versus really high frequencies. In the yellow area, the capacitor here is open at really low frequencies. So let's make this even better. Let's redraw this. Here we go. At really low frequencies, the inductor is a wire. The capacitor is an open. And you get absolutely nothing across the resistor because there's a cut in the circuit right here. Now, what happens is, as you approach um, the center frequency, as we approach the center frequency, these two components are there with moderate amounts of resistance, but they reach a point of resonance right here where the blue arrow is. They reach a point of resonance and they, they cancel out. They become a dead short and all the frequency and all the voltage is delivered to the output of the resistor. And that's how the voltage maximizes at the um, center frequency. The cap and the inductor are a dead short. There it is. And all you're left with at resonance, that magic spot, the whole voltage goes across the resistor. Okay? And you get a peak in the curve, like what you're seeing out here. Now, if you're talking about frequencies that are really, really, really high, well, capacitors are shorts to high frequency, correct? Capacitors are shorts to really high frequency. So the capacitor is shorted and the inductor is um, not it is actually open at really high frequencies. And what that does is it produces the reverse effect that we had at the lower frequencies. But now the inductor, not the capacitor, is open and the voltage to the output is zero, 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 zero going this way. And that's how the bandpass works. Here is a bandpass filter um, using a parallel resonance circuit. Um, the maximum impedance of this circuit here occurs at resonance, which means um, it swamps this resistance here. And there is a ton of resistance right here from the LC compared to R. And when that happens, where does most of the voltage go in a series circuit? You guessed it, to the output, okay? This is called a tank circuit, and at resonance, at the center frequency, F sub C, it will produce the largest voltage. Another type of filter is a band stop filter, okay? And the band stop filter is the inverted version of a band pass filter. So if you take these low pass and high pass filters and your low pass has a cutoff here and your high pass, which has no output until it hits here, but it has a critical frequency here and the low pass has a critical frequency there then the two the two circuits um, pass pass low frequencies and pass high frequencies and they have an opening right here where there's no output kind of interesting here's uh, here's a look at that here's here's how you actually construct the circuit and uh, you're going to get, um, you know, impedance minimums at 
the resonant frequency. So this circuit here, as you approach on a bandpass, you approach the peak on a notch filter, you approach a minimum voltage. Okay, so the impedance here, um, these two components at resonance become a short circuit and have no voltage being delivered to the output. Very interesting. Here's, uh, here's another, uh, um, well, this is the same slide. I put it in here by accident, so we'll just bop over. Here's a parallel resonant uh, band stop circuit. Um, it's a little different. The tank uh, impedance here is at a max right there. So most of the voltage gets sucked up by this, uh, creating the notch filter response. So at the resonant frequency, the impedance of this circuit is astronomically huge when compared to the um, resistor. I better change my dot size. There we go. Does that help? Let's see. Does that help? That does help. Okay, there we go. So as I was saying, we've got a circuit here, right here, that has an astronomically huge impedance. The tank, the tank uh, impedance at resonance is huge. Um, there's a formula in the chapter that you can actually calculate it. So um, these two combine in parallel to produce a large value when compared to the resistance of the resistor. Um, it is 10 times or more bigger, uh, so none of the voltage gets to the load. And that concludes our um, filter theory material.